everything just happened really fast. I didn't realize the impact at that time, but I look back now and go, I just couldn't imagine being a parent trying to get my child out of that rubble. It's devastating. You look at it and think, how is this ever going to be cleaned up or fixed? It's pretty devastating, especially to the big tough guys. Currently I am by myself. Um, my husband is on the Afghan-Pakistan border. I have wonderful friends that are helping me. I'm so thankful. I'm so blessed. If we uh, restore power now at this time, it just uh, you know, brings some normalcy back to uh, the community. As far as what we're doing, it, it's uh, actually a plus for the community. So, yeah, I'm glad I'm here. You know, the cemetery is right in the heart of where it happened, so unfortunately I'm sure there will be burials here. and. You know, you want to get as much of the tornado gone from the cemetery as you can. To think about any of the parents that lost children is just, of course, mortifying. I grew up as a young man in Grandview, Missouri. We're doing the power washing on the IMAX theater here. They hope to uh, have the doors open Friday evening, maybe uh, give the citizens of Moore a chance to step into the theater and not have to think about what's going on outside for a little bit. You know, when you have these types of disasters and then you see how many people have good spirits and kind hearts and just come together to help. Hopefully this will help lift your spirits. Hang in there and keep your chins up. South Florida has your back. And then sincerely from Rob from out of Fort Lauderdale. So I mean, he just donated his guitar and uh, tuner with it and just, I mean, people are just amazing right now. I just uh, hope that the citizens of Moore and Cleveland County here, they don't ha ever have to experience this again. I think they've had enough. I'm just taking it one step at a time. I just want people to know that God, God's there. You know what I mean? He didn't cause this. Legends to rising stars. Give it up for Jay Z. MTNA got you feeling like a champion. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Al. Got your girl on Molly, and we smoking loud and drinking. In case you didn't know if he could dunk or not, now you do. Even professional athletes are sharing and singing Molly's tune. Pop the Molly, I'm sweating. Pop the Molly, I'm sweating. Often referred to as the love drug. Molly is known for making the user compassionate, mellow, comfortable. The first time we did it, it was uh, it was ridiculous. It was it was really fun, but I mean, like more than that, it was like really eye opening. Um, I had been living with two guys who I had shared nothing more than an occasional high five with. For the first 45 minutes, we were just hugging each other and laying around and telling each other, you know, how much we loved each other. It's the time. This occasional user asked to go by the name John. He says he did his research before doing the drug and liked the results. He likes it. He likes it. It's one of the most enjoyable drug experiences. Drugs are bad. Just say no. But as far as its danger compared to alcohol or cigarettes, it's infinitesimally smaller. But Tama Sawyer, the director of the University of Kansas Hospital's Poison Control Center, says Molly has a dark side. We're talking seizures, we're talking huge headaches, we're talking foaming at the mouth, we're talking about major muscle cramping, and you're talking about a trip, no trip, no trip, no trip, you're talking about a trip to the hospital. She also says deaths from the drug are not uncommon, mostly because people think they are taking X, another street name for Molly, but actually ingesting something entirely different. What's the guy in his, his basement thinking? He doesn't care. He only cares about the money he's making. You've got somebody who may not even have a high school education who truly believes he's making ecstasy does one thing wrong and you've got the wrong drug. Danielle Bilbrey is a forensic scientist at the Johnson County, Kansas Police Crime Lab who's tested drugs that have come in labeled as Molly. I've seen one tablet that had meth, MDMA, ketamine, um, piperazines, and a tryptamine in it. That's, I mean, a lot of stimulants and hallucinogens all in one tablet. And it's like a race among the, the people who make it to make a stronger, better, faster, hipper version of something else, and that something else could be deadly. What we're doing is we're looking down and we're trying to find anything that will give any indication of where this fella might be. 
Arm in arm they go. Several small groups trek through rough terrain in rural Liberty near Birmingham and Holt, hoping to find this man, 30-year-old Chad Rogers, who never returned from a run Monday night. It's pretty scary because, I mean, it's not, not something like Chad would do, so that's, that's pretty scary to think that, of the options, but just kind of have, have to be hopeful. Command. So searchers partnered with CERT, or the Community Emergency Response Team. Some searchers are Chad's friends, this guy coming back early from as far as the East Coast to lend a hand. About a day and a half ago, I got a call saying that uh, Chad was missing. So I ended my training a little early, and uh, I found the first flight back to Kansas City. Copy insole only. Search mobile command unit jotting down every little detail teams were radioing back to tell them. Items that seem out of place in their search area and stopping by anyone who thought they could help. Didn't know if the beast picture of him. Jason Kipping showed officials his trail cam in case there were any signs of his old neighbor. I thought, you know, maybe something somebody had walked by the camera or something would trigger the camera and maybe Something to help uh, help find Chad. Got a lot of deer, but still no clues. Even so, that doesn't stop complete strangers fighting the foliage. I don't want to stop until he's home, one way or another. Hey Chad, if you can hear our voice, until Chad is home. Hey, let us know. I got a four-year-old sitting at home that I love dearly, and I couldn't imagine putting my boy with no dad or his wife for that matter. Police say two different dogs follow Chad's scent to the same location near Ruth Ewing in Birmingham, but the smell essentially vanished from there. Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. Come on, Scoop. Like many kids aspiring to be the best. Change your feet. Let's go. Compete against the best. Build and talk. And play at the highest level. Good job. A day in the life of 16-year-old Danon Swope consists of practice, conditioning, and more practice. If it's something you love, like, you're, you're going to want to do it. From high school basketball workouts in the morning to club drills at night, time isn't the only sacrifice for Swope and his family. I know it's tough for her. One, to pay for it, that's a given, but to get us around. It is very expensive. Swope's mom, Cynthia Perry, has put three kids through club sports and for years has worked a second job to pay for it. You just kind of give up a little bit, sacrifice a little bit. Perry says on average she spends around $1,800 per year, times that by three for each kid over a span of 10 years, and the cost adds up. For Perry, it's been worth it. There are so many benefits. I mean. I believe that sports are, create such a good ethic of teamwork for the child just in your everyday life. After being seen by recruiters at AAU tournaments, her oldest son, Christian Duke, got a full ride to the University of San Diego for soccer and athletics and now plays for Sporting KC. Her daughter is on a soccer scholarship at Avila University. Good talk, talk, talk. And Swope, a junior, has already been contacted by numerous D1 basketball programs. When they have free college later on in life, and some of those colleges were over $200,000, it's not a bad deal. It's almost like an investment, uh, just like, you know, within anything. An investment, says UMKC head basketball coach Kareem Richardson, whose current scholarship players were all scouted from club teams. If a family can afford to pay off, if, if the kid takes it the right way and has the right attitude, to be able to have the opportunity to play, uh, get a scholarship for college, you know, maybe it outweighs the, the finances. But Richardson and high school coach Brett McFall say playing year round has its downfalls. Now uh, you really find more guys are getting burned out sooner because they are playing a little bit uh, more, as you would say, all year round as opposed to back when I was growing up, three sport guys. I don't think parents should streamline the kid towards one sport either. Uh, I think the kids should do what they want to do. Mocan Basketball Club Director of Operations Jim Huber says he sees many parents pushing their kids in a direction for which their child has no aspirations. So many times we're looking what's best for maybe us instead of what's best for the kid. The kids are